Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will show you how I cut my monthly electricity bills by almost £300. I recently installed a solar system which consists of 5.5 kilowatts worth of solar panels, a 6 kilowatt alpha hex 6 inverter and 16.4 kilowatt hours of alpha batteries. If you want to see how I decided on this particular solar system there is a link in the description below. Now £300 a month is quite a high energy bill and you might ask what I have at home that uses so much electricity. Electricity. Everyone in the family here is studying subjects at university that involves considerable use of information technology. So there are several computers here running at home. The readings in this video are from August 2023, well into the British summer. In addition, the home is using new induction electricity cookers to replace the uh, gas ones slowly. We have a hot water cylinder that is still mainly heated by gas. Still, it has the My Energy Eddy installed, which can use surplus solar electricity to heat uh, the water. There's also an electric vehicle, which is charged mainly at night. Uh, and some rooms in the house also have air conditioning system, which is for the purpose of this video being used in the cooling mode. Air conditioning units that I've got are able to heat as well. Uh, and perhaps I'll make a further video when it's winter. To see how solar panels and batteries have reduced the amount of electricity used from the grid, we need to look at how energy is being used and stored throughout the day. The Alpha app does show how much energy is being used and when in a graphical form. Here is the view on a hot summer day in England. The time is on the bottom axis. The left axis shows how much energy is being used or generated. And the right side shows the percentage charge left in the battery. The tariff that I'm currently using is called Octopus Intelligent, which has an off-peak period between 23.30 and 05.30 hours overnight. Let's start at the left side at midnight. The battery is exhausted. It actually stops discharging when it reaches a capacity of 5%, and we are relying on the grid for all our electricity needs. This is shown in brown-red on the graph. You can make out the flat battery with a charge of 5% as this flat line. At 02.30 am, the battery starts to charge using the grid, and you can see this happening with this green area slowly increasing. This is an example of what it looks like in the app in detail. In this case, the battery is using around 5.7 kilowatts when it is charging. The size of your inverter limits the rate of charging. In my case, the Alpha S6 can handle up to 6 kilowatts. Charging of the battery from the grid is set to continue until 0530 when the off-peak electricity rate ends. By 0530, the 16.4 kilowatt hour battery is fully charged and you can see the green area reaching the top of the graph. Whilst the battery is charging, any electricity that's being used from the house is going to be taken from the grid. There is no electric vehicle being charged overnight at this time. If you did decide to charge an electric vehicle using a 7 kilowatt charger and charge your home energy battery simultaneously, here's what it would look like in the app. We are drawing a massive 14 kilowatt from the grid with 7 kilowatt going to the EV charger. We will actually be charging an EV the following night and we'll look at this later in the video. As my charger is a Zappi, I get access to the My Energy app which again shows how much energy is being used from the grid. There is a slight difference in readings between the Alpha and the My Energy apps though. Overnight, there is a load of around 2.3 kilowatt per hour throughout the night, which will be the air conditioning, which is on cooling, and the usual background usage for refrigeration, etc. The electricity you are using is shown in this blue teal color on the graph. At 0530, it is still nighttime with no solar energy. So immediately, all the load on the house will come from the battery again, which will slowly start to discharge. This is the end of the Octopus Intelligent off-peak period. So usage from 0530 hours will now be from the battery and the grid if needed. It is not until around 0700 that we get some sunlight and solar panels start generating electricity. This is shown as yellow on the graph. However, everyone at home is up at 0730 and we can see a spike in energy usage throughout the morning. Over the morning, the electric cooker and microwave start being used and as the sun shines brighter, we begin to use washing machines and dishwashers. As it is August, we are still in the school holiday period. Everybody is at home and electricity is being used for air conditioning and entertainment throughout the day. 
However, we do use more than what our battery can handle for brief periods, which is up to the six kilowatt load of our inverter. And some electricity must be used from the grid, even during the peak period. Although we try and keep this at a minimum, I wish to make it reasonable for my family to decide when and where to use appliances and watch TV. It's easier to say to them, use your appliances when the sun is shining bright and not use more than one appliance at once, rather than being very prescriptive, um, which can restrict their uh, quality of life. At around midday, we reach a peak solar energy production. As we're generating more electricity than we use, the surplus returns to charging the battery. Here is how it shows on the Alpha app. At this point, we are generating just over five kilowatts of electricity using 2.6 kilowatts, and this leaves 2.2 kilowatt, which is now charging the battery. So rather than charging the battery from the grid overnight, we are now charging the battery free of charge using clean green energy using the solar panels. After around 1400 hours, we have now fully charged our battery again, and almost all of the home's energy needs have been provided mainly by free green solar energy. In fact, we are now generating a surplus, which is being exported back to the grid for a short period, as shown in red here. This is what it looks like in the app. We now have a feed-in rate of 0.5 watts sent to the grid. There's also a tariff associated with export energy, and I'll mention this briefly at the end of the video. The solar panels generate enough energy to completely power the home until about 1700 hours, when we must use our battery again. We will continue to use the battery until it's completely discharged, which occurs at around 2300 hours on this particular day. This is slightly outside the Octopus Intellige tariff of peak period, which starts at 2330. <laughs> There is a spike again in energy usage at around 23-30 hours, which corresponds to our EV starting to charge itself. The graph ends the day at midnight at 2400 hours. Let's start analysing the data over this period. If we look at the Octopus Energy's app usage over the same period, we can see that the graph is the same shape as the grid usage on the Alpha app. It also shows that we used 35.07 kilowatt hours of electricity on this day, almost all in the off-peak period, which is what we want to do. So how did we save money by installing solar panels and a battery? The single rate tariff I had before installing the solar panels was called Octopus Flexible. This has a flat rate at the time of recording of 29.94 pence per kilowatt hours. I won't be including any standing charge or VAT in any of the calculations here, just to keep things simple. Here is a, a copy of my Octopus Energy bill for August 2023. As you can see, it states we used a total of 845.6 kilowatt hours. However, if you look at the Alpha app, it states we consumed a total of 786.61 kilowatt hours from the grid. It also tells us that the total load on the house for the month was 1,258.67 kilowatt hours. It also tells us that we managed to generate a total of 591.30 kilowatt hours from solar energy. We also managed to feed in 119.24 kilowatt hours back to the grid. So lots, lots of numbers in here, please bear with me. If I had stayed on Flexible Octopus without any battery or solar, the 1,258.67 kilowatt hours of usage would have resulted in a bill of £376.85. And this is before the VAT and standing charge. However, by switching to Intelligent Octopus and installing solar and a battery and making use of the off-peak periods, we got the bill down to £74.63 before VAT and standing charges. This is already a saving of £302.22. If we take into account the money we got to export electricity, which is on a tariff called outgoing octopus at 15 pence per kilowatt hour, the 119.24 kilowatt hours we exported would also give us a gain of 17 pound 87, potentially reducing our bill down further to 56 pound 78. So if you use a lot of energy, you can save a considerable amount if you install the correct solar system and pair it with the right tariff. If you want to sign up for Octopus Energy, I have a link in the description below that will both give us 50 pounds off our energy bill when you sign up. You will also need a smart meter, which Octopus will likely install for you. And then you can choose an off-peak smart tariff like Octopus Go and Intelligent Octopus. However, both require an electric vehicle and the Intelligent Octopus limits these further to specific manufacturers. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'd love to hear about your experiences, so put these in the comments below. Please like the video if you found it useful, and subscribe to the channel, as it does really help the video get out to more people. See you all in the next video.